Good morning. Welcome to Dale's DIY. And uh, today we're going to talk about how to do a Ford Twin I beam suspension. We're working on the 93 Ranger. If you like what you're seeing, I hope that you can uh, share with your friends, like, subscribe. That helps us out a lot when we get enough subscribers. That'll help us move forward. But anyway, what we're doing here today, um, we're putting polyurethane bushings into uh, the control arms on the uh, Twin I beam. And uh, it's pretty straightforward once you know what you're doing. Now, with each one, of course, different models, different sizes, these uh, urethane bushings uh, are, are built for more than one model. What uh, early on you'll discover is, if you're working with a Ranger, that the insert is uh, not the right size. It's too short, and it's also too big an inner diameter for the bolts in the Ranger. So you want to take your old sleeve and you take it out of uh, the rubber bushing that was in here in this end and you uh, heat this bushing up when you take the bushing out of here you don't just simply press it out you need to heat it up to where the rubber breaks the bond from the shell because the shell is put in a particular way so that when this bushing goes on like that and if you get it backwards after you press it out, you're going to get it pressed back in the right distance, the right way. Uh, just heat it up, press out the old rubber bushing, and while it's still warm, just knock this out of it. And then I've got a little lathe over here that we cleaned this up on, so now it's ready to reassemble. So the, the silicone grease that they supply, we'll be applying that to the, this bushing and then assembling this together and then putting it into that control arm. Now, this one here is pretty, pretty, there we go, finally broke out. So I just um, use a rag so I don't get all messy on my finger and um, just pull that baby open and uh, just apply some of the grease there. Then uh, you don't want any squeaks. Uh, I, I hate driving a pickup down the road that every time you hit a bump you got to squeak. So this will keep it from squeaking. Um, which will make it a much better ride and uh, you'll appreciate that. So now you see I've got the, uh, the steel bushing in the middle. It's greased up. It slides. I've got it stacked to where it will go in on this side. But first I'm going to grease this inside area and this outside area and then we can drive it in with a rubber hammer. So getting all the areas that are going to match up with metal, making sure that they're all greased. So I get some in that groove there. And then we'll get some across all of this and then we'll hammer it in. So guys, what we ended up doing here, this is Joel, by the way. Um, I'm his son, FYI, winner of the Mustang giveaway. Yay! <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Anyways, it uh, wasn't working with the hammer quite right, so we decided to go ahead and throw it in the vise and just squeeze it with this uh, little adapter here on the back and uh, put that like that into the vise and then just run it down, and it went right in, didn't it? It went in perfect. She was fighting it a so, little bit, but we made uh -huh. sure she went in. Yeah, so this one simply goes on right there. Okay, so now what we'll do is show you how we put it into the frame. All right, guys, so we're getting ready to put it in the frame here. Um, Dad is greasing it up right now. That's one thing I didn't want you guys to miss. You're supposed to grease every single piece of polyurethane that's supposed to be in contact with any kind of metal. So you guys definitely want to make sure, so like Dad said, there is no squeaks, there is no rubbing or uh, deformations or anything like that. So he's greasing it up right now, so you can tell. I'm really just here to hold camera and narrate, but I was like, I've never seen myself on Dad's channel, so. Actually, did I? I, I don't remember. I don't, other than the giveaway, I don't think you've been on. Yeah, so. Anyways, guys, <coughs> make sure to like, subscribe if you're finding this video helpful. That way we can make more videos like this or leave a comment or comments down below leaving suggestions or ideas for us to cover next. Um, that's a real big thing is comments so we know what to make next. So, anyways, back to it. Okay, now on the part of the arm that goes into the, the cross member, you have two washers. See the difference of internal diameter there? So this one, the bigger one, goes on the arm first. And then the bigger 
one goes here like that. Let me grease that one up. And then what will happen, because this polyurethane is not quite as long, this is designed to stop right there. We're going to drill this out so that it can get the proper squish on the polyurethane. So we'll drill this out and run the nut down to uh, where that bottom's out, which will be about the right squish on this particular model. So let me get this greased up. Look about right. All right, guys, so I'm going to go ahead and apologize for the wind noise because it is flat moving out here. No, but here we go. go. More. Need to go more. So we are lifting up this control arm here. So hopefully I'm using the jack just to position it so I can slide it in. An extra hand. Get down here a little bit and see. So now what we're going to have to do, we've got the jack holding the arm in the right position. So now we're going to have to hit the outside of the arm with our hammer, get it close enough here that we can um, get our uh, pry bar and get it up and in the where it belongs. I was hoping you would have nailed that and I was going to say, who needs a pry bar when you're built like a man? Yeah, that's <laughs> right. You keep talking. I like the way you're talking. Mm, you're almost there. I mean, I can see the outside race of it. Alright, we may have to Get a little bar, to one, one or two bars. We're going to put you down for a second, guys. It was a bit of work, and it ended up taking both Joel and I. What we did was we put this come along on here, because we had to bring the arm in. Then we um, used a pry bar to line this up, brought the bolt in from the other side, then used this pry bar to push down to get this lined up and then just kind of worked with this cable to get our hole lined up and then Joel tapped the rest of it in. So now we're in place. So we'll shift, uh, we'll finish getting that tightened up and this bushing on. All right guys, so we ran into another issue. As all of you car guys know, it never goes according to plan. And from the factory it was wrong. And from the factory it was wrong, I guess. So, what Dad's doing is heating up this nut here so we can break that loose because that side went in, right? This side is way off. You guys can tell we got we kind of got the thread on there, but it ain't, yeah, it ain't definitely right. So we are uh, getting ready to break that loose in order to swing it out a little bit and in order to stick it in there. In alignment. So, in alignment. So he is getting that nut nice and hot so we can get that broke loose uh, nice and easy. And uh, yeah, so more car guy stuff. Again, sorry for the wind, dude. If you guys can't see, the trees are just a swinging. Look at that, guys. It's just moving like crazy. So, all right, guys, we will see when we get that broke loose. Don't have to burn your hand. For sure. So close. What let's do. it up it worked out like a charm dad's getting ready to hit her with the old impact yep what we did was we took heated it up kept that underneath there hit it a number of times got it lined up yep so i will torque that bolt back up after we get that torqued down and it cools off yes so anyways back to the shop to find the socket we need for the ratchet Okay, next we got that bolt torque down, so we're going to put this bushing in uh, while it's cooling off. We'll get it cooled off, hit it with some paint again, and then put the coil spring on, and then we'll change the ball joints out. You'll notice got a pinch bolt for that top ball joint. This is the bushing, and this determines your alignment on the front end, and it's the top ball joint bushing, and so it slides within the, the control arm. Now you'll see that that is totally offset. You see that right there is the bolt hole for the pinch bolt to hold it into place. I'd like to get them nice and clean so that if you have to exchange them to, to, to change your alignment, it's not a hard job. So I've coated it with the anti-seize and let's just tap it in. Now when you tap it in, you gotta 
got to line up the bolt hole uh, with what you're doing over here. It's a simple tap. It don't take much. And we're going to watch this line up with that. I think you're far down enough. There, there we go. go. There we go. All right. Old eyes without magnifying glasses. Yep. Make sure it's cross threaded. Cross threading is a new Loctite. <laughs> <laughs> what I do when I take these things apart, I take a punch, a letter punch, and passenger on this side, driver on that side, so that when I reassemble, I don't get in trouble. So I've got this marked with a, a letter punch, so I know which side is which, because the other side is a straight bushing. This one's definitely offset. We'll take it in and get it aligned, because we don't know how much that was throwing off the alignment. So it'll be interesting when it's all done. So now we're ready to change out the ball joints and put the spindle on. There goes your rich neighbor. Hi guys, I think I'm getting ready to retire from this guy. Yeah! Like, hey, get the film camera. Mad scientist. So anyways, he's getting ready to take the snap ring off of this bottom knuckle. These are the best snap ring pliers. Don't invest in high dollar stuff. Get you a pair of these and rig one for inside and one for outside. They're the Diamond D34R and they just work good. Whether it's transmission or whether it's front end suspension parts. Look at that, it did come off pretty easy. Yeah, not too bad. So what we'll do here, other ends kind of stuck a little bit. So we'll just work it on up, you know, work with what we got. Got a little bit of a bugger. We may have to bring her back down just a wee bit here to work it on out. There. I didn't even need the, didn't even need it. Yeah, rusty old job. Now, the other thing we have, a tool that you need. I got this from Napa. It's a Napa 3421. But it's got all the tools you need to replace ball joints and other such things. So we've got a C clamp. We got units to go around here or a unit to go around there. And then uh, this uh, fits like this and then the clamp goes into that. So anyway, we'll get this all set up here and uh, probably take a little bit of heat to make her go. But uh, we're going to get things moving and, and get some of the stuff popped out. You've got to use your logic to uh, get it going uh, because it can be a little bit tough. Um, it can be a little bit tough. We'll see you when we get there. Yep, we're ready. Okay, if you come around here, you'll see how we have the press set up. Torque it down here. Of course, it's just tight as can be with that old rust there. But you can see where we have the sleeve. And the sleeve, of course, goes around the ball joint, up against the steel, got the cap, got the press, and we're going to push it up through. So listen to this thing. You're going to hear it pop as soon as she breaks free with, free with all that heat. But you don't have to record all this. Oh, yeah. All right, now on this top ball joint, that's why we took the bottom one out first. You have to set it up like this to press it out. Now, when we get to putting it back together, we'll end up using the press to put in one of these ball joints because it's just too tough to get with this uh, tool. But anyway, you gotta have this tool to come apart. You can see how it's set up. Now we gotta heat it up and uh, it'll, it'll come with a pop just like the other one did. It'll pop once it's loose and you'll see it move about a sixteenth of an inch. All right, so when you're putting your spring together, uh, the, the bottom plastic, uh, it goes, you can see here, matches right here. And that just holds the spring in place. And then you'll put a washer and a nut to clamp the spring to the axle. And then the top part here rolls into the bracket. If you look at your bracket, you will see one that's rolled under. That is where this piece goes in. And then you simply keep everything lined up 
and you roll it into that Trying to get this piece on the bottom to stay lined up while we roll the top piece in. Alright, there we got it. So we got it all lined up there with both, bra both brackets. That's rolled into the top. The bottom's lined up. Now we'll put the washer and the nut down in there and torque it down. Okay, so you slide this washer into the, between the coal stack and onto the nut, the bolt, and then you get your nut started and we'll take a ratchet and extension down through here.